Okay, good morning everybody. Uh, I'm Alessandro Cometta, I work uh, in, in size uh, in, in confocal microscopy. So uh, this is exactly my, my topic. Um, I will cover some of the questions uh, you already done uh, in a more specific way. Uh, however, I, would, uh, I want to start uh, with uh, an historical image. This is uh, a picture of uh, Jena in 1846 uh, when uh, uh, Karl Zeiss opened a small uh, uh, shop uh, here uh, selling uh, uh, reagents and uh, uh, low power microscopes. At the times, the microscope looks uh, a little bit different uh, than uh, the, the microscope you are using. And all the technology, if we can uh, speak about technology, was here. So here we have uh, a couple of lens, uh, and uh, the production was done uh, as a trial and error uh, system. So it was extremely expensive and unreliable. Uh, so Carl Zeiss uh, um, hired um, a professor, a physics pro professor, Professor Abbe, who in uh, 10 years more or less uh, developed the law of optics. And this is the, the law that we still use today for uh, looking stars, for looking microscope, and was the, the law able to produce the first uh, planar pomeracate uh, objective, and are the objective that we still use in every high-level microscope. Uh, we also developed the fluorescence microscope. Even if we, at the time, uh, we didn't know uh, about the fluorescence and about the, uh, the fluorescence microscope. This is, uh, whoa. OK, I will use that one. Um, here there is a lamp. The microscope is very similar to, to that one. and. Uh, uh, bean pointer. Ah, it's okay. Wrong. Uh, was produced uh, a light coming from here and hitting the sample. At the time, August Kohler uh, mm, used the, the terms, uh, um, speaking about fluorescence, I told uh, there is a side effect uh, looking at uh, our sample, and was the fluorescence. Um, this is one of the first. Uh, phase uh, contrast, uh, now this is the first uh, phase contrast movie on meiotic cells. And the interesting thing is that uh, this is the microscope with the incubation, but this is the camera. <laughs> 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 then uh, we reduce it a little bit, uh, the, the size of the camera. This is the first microscope uh, sold in Italy. And uh, uh, again, uh, it looks a little bit uh, more than our microscope. And now. This is the last two microscopes uh, uh, produced by, by Zeiss and are, again, much more different than, than before. Uh, anyway, um, uh, coming back uh, on Carl Zeiss and Enes Abbe, actually, uh, Carl Zeiss is a foundation. And uh, also from the social point, uh, um, he introduced a lot of uh, uh, new things uh, as a one rest day a week. And uh, uh, still today, we spend um, more than 10% of our uh, invoice uh, for research. So not the gain, but the invoice. These are a lot of, uh, of money that uh, uh, not all the company is able to do. Uh, thanks to this high uh, um, burst to the research, uh, we was able to uh, pass from the bright field, uh, from the low contrast, uh, as uh, uh, the talk of Gabriele uh, by before, to the uh, fluorescence. That is, uh, as Gabriele told, uh, very, very nice because we have on the black, so on nothing, we have a very bright signal, exactly the signal we need. On the coming on the anatomy, so approaching uh, the the system, uh, we are a source light in the transmitted light, then a lens, the condenser, another lens, the objective, and then the eyepiece. If we go on the um, fluorescence, uh, okay, the cube, but the, the very 
uh, good things of the, uh, the very improvement of the cube is that uh, we couple two different uh, paths, like paths. So we don't need any more the condenser, but we just use one single lens package. And this is uh, extremely useful because uh, when you need to change the lens, uh, you have just to change one lens and not two lens anymore. There is no alignment and it's much, much easier. Of course, this is an upright microscope. And when uh, we speak uh, about cells, uh, we usually work on, uh, on Petri dish. So we use the gravity to keep uh, the cells uh, uh, on, the, uh, on the Petri. Of course, the microscope uh, have to be an inverted one. And again, the cube is uh, uh, the, the opposite. Um, if you need to assess uh, some of this uh, um, information, uh, you just hit uh, in, uh, you just type uh, in Google Zeiss and Campus and you will assess uh, uh, this kind of uh, um, resource. Uh, it is very nice because uh, you can find uh, more or less everything from a lamp uh, to uh, a dye to uh, super resolution techniques. Uh, as an example, uh, this can be one of the resources uh, uh, available. This is uh, the, um, the beam path of the microscope, uh, and you can see what happened by changing the, <coughs> the cube. Or uh, uh, you can assess, uh, coming back again, Or you can uh, assess information uh, as the, how it's done uh, uh, a GFP in a very simple way. So why fluorescence? Uh, the fluorescence, uh, as told uh, uh, Gabriele, is uh, because we have two different wavelengths. So we can use uh, two different kinds of lights, uh, monochromatic lights, and this happen uh, this is uh, a very good news for uh, the optical sectioning and for retrieve specific information on the on the on the sample. Uh, I use uh, one single leg wavelength that, as Gabriele told, can be at the peak or outside. So, one milliwatt here is exactly as a two milliwatt here, or four milliwatt here, or ten milliwatt here. So, the output uh, will be exactly the same. Then uh, relaxing, uh, thermal relaxing, and uh, again, spectrum emission. emission. Uh, I will uh, show again um, a slide on the cube because they are very, very important. And because in the microscope, in the uh, confocal, usually we use no cubes, no filter cubes, uh, because you have to uh, construct to um, create uh, your own uh, filter set. So in this case, you have uh, an excitation and an emission. Uh, again, this is uh, uh, acquired mm, through the, um, the same resource of before. And there you can, uh, as an example, uh, enter the, um, your dye, your fluorophore, and select uh, the filter cube. This is true for every uh, company. So this is for Zeiss, but uh, Nikon have uh, his own, uh, Olympus and Leica uh, have the same. And then you have uh, uh, a very nice image where you can understand uh, where you are hitting your sample and where you are looking at your sample. So if your sample is the GFP, this is the excitation, this is the emission, and you can understand that on this part, uh, you, are, you have an efficient of about 50%. Uh, and here, you are collecting more or less all the light emitted by the sample. This is very important for optical sectioning because uh, the optical sectioning uh, is reducing uh, again the light. So I'm not acquiring all the light coming on the sample. I'm just uh, hitting uh, on the complete uh, thick of a uh, slice of sample. However, my, my goal is to acquire just uh, one single plane. So 
I have to uh, find a way to remove uh, all the light uh, coming from the uh, bottom and from, from the lower plane. If I compare a standard wide field image of a thick sample with a confocal image or an optical sectioning image, here I have much less light <laughs> but coming from one single plane. Uh, the problem is the noise because here the noise is below the light and I am not aware uh, of uh, how, m how much noise I have here. Here the noise uh, will become important. So this excitation comes from all the surface, uh, all the, the volume. In the emission, this is the standard wide field and this is what uh, I'm interested for. There are many, many different uh, techniques uh, to achieve this kind of result. Uh, I can acquire the light and then remove the unwanted components, as an example the convolution or the structural illumination. I can uh, block the out of focus light with a filters, with a filter, with a pinhole, and this is the case of confocal, or I can use a special system as an example, the turf or the multiphoton, able to excite uh, only the small uh, volume interested in. In principle, this is th the, best, uh, um, the best way, the best uh, strategy. However, uh, because um, uh, I, um, uh, I will not destroy all the molecule in the upper and lower planes. However, uh, these kind of techniques are much more complex than a standard confocal. So it's a, a problem of uh, balancing. Anyway, coming on confocal methods, uh, we can uh, have a point scanner, line scanner, and spinning disk. This is a way to improve uh, and to speed up uh, the, the system because the confocal is mm, by design a very, very uh, mm, a slow system. Again, the scheme of fluorescence. L where is the difference? The difference is that uh, I will use a laser instead of a standard lamp. The laser is uh, monochromatic and uh, is able to focalize just one single point. Then, Instead of uh, use a camera, uh, uh, eye with retina or um, a pellicle or something like that, a film, I will put uh, simply a, um, a hole, a small uh, a diaphragm with a small hole. This is the heart of a confocal system. All the light coming from uh, lower and upper parts of the signal of the sample are not allowed to pass or are greatly reduced. So the intensity of the light coming from up and, and down parts, upper and lower parts, uh, are more or less reduced by a factor of 99%. This uh, means that uh, if I enlarge this pinhole, I will come back uh, on a standard wide field image. If I reduce the pinhole, I, I filter the light and I remove everything is not in focus. Um, coming back on, on your question, uh, optical sectioning, what are the, the thickness? What is the, thic the thickness of, uh, of my sample? It depends on, on me. It depends on the numerical aperture, on, on the wavelength, of course, uh, because if I hit uh, a sample uh, with a UV light, it's much more different than hitting a sample with a infrared light. And uh, the pinhole diameter. Here, it depends from the objective, uh, here from the laser, uh, from the source, uh, and this depends on me, on, on the slider, on my software. Another bad uh, information, another bad uh, uh, 
problem is that uh, I cannot acquire the image completely, but I acquire just one single point of the image because of the pinhole. All the information coming from that plane are removed, but one single voxel, one single pixel, voxel, uh, volume pixel coming from here. So I have to scan the image point by point and line by line to get an image and uh, move uh, the, the axis uh, to acquire uh, a Z-stack. So if I look uh, at my images, uh, I will have uh, in Z a lot of images, a gallery of images, a stack of images where all the sample is black, uh, but some single information on the plane and on a single color. So when I acquire an, a confocal image, uh, I will get uh, one image for the red, one image for the uh, blue, one image for the green, and so on. Why the confocal is so powerful? Because uh, if I look uh, on a standard sample or a the sample you want in wide field, uh, you still get the information, the out of focus information, and is uh, kind of blurry. In this case, uh, the out of focus information are completely removed and can be reconstructed by adding the information from the other planes. For that reason, we have a uh, much better information. Uh, anyway, the microscope, uh, the confocal microscope, is able to acquire not only one single wavelength, however, I can uh, split and use uh, two different uh, wavelengths, uh, two uh, different uh, excitation to get at the same time two different wavelengths, red and green, as an example, at the same time. Uh, we use uh, two filters. As an example, I will put a long pass in this case. I will put a band pass in this case and am able to split the light in two and have the red light here and the green light here. It's a kind of uh, double filter cube. Because my cubes uh, in is uh, in effect uh, uh, not done by three uh, different filters as before, but uh, I have one filter here, and then I have another cubes able to split. Uh, anyway, the fluorophore and the dyes are much more than than two, and we are speaking now about uh, spectral confocal microscopy, spectral microscopy. So we have not anymore one color, but we have a lot of different colors. And different uh, um, system uh, able to acquire the light in, a, in different ways. We can uh, acquire in simultaneous way or in sequential way. There are different filters produced by different companies. Uh, as an example, there is uh, an AOTF uh, produced by uh, Leica, who is able to set up uh, a bandpass filter of the wavelength uh, of the bandpass uh, uh, required and move it uh, very, very quickly. Or there are uh, um, different ways to open the spectrum and acquire simultaneously the spectrum. So. In this case, uh, I will get uh, not only the blue, the green, and the red, uh, but I will have uh, 34 images. So I will have the blue, the cyan, the cyan green, the green, uh, the uh, yellow green, uh, the orange, the red, uh, and the far red, and so on. So at the end, uh, all these techniques uh, are um, able to, in sequential or in different way to acquire the sample and to acquire a spectrum. For every single pixel, I will have a spectrum. 
Uh, one of the first uh, use uh, was a uh, dichroic, then uh, was introduced uh, a prism, then was introduced a variable uh, dichroic uh, um, mirror, uh, then was introduced a uh, um, uh, holographic gratings able to open the light. Anyway, at the end, what we want to do is move uh, some uh, mechanics or some optoelectronics uh, and get two different images on the, on the detectors. Uh, usually this is uh, uh, confined, this is uh, true for confocal methods because uh, multiphoton and other systems are not so, uh, it's not so easy to work uh, on spectral images uh, on, on this kind of system. Uh, coming back again on the uh, confocal uh, properties. I told you that uh, uh, one of the most important things is the numerical aperture. Uh, you know uh, why it is, but maybe this is a way uh, you can remember. Uh, <coughs> if I have a, a small lens, uh, the quantity and the quality of the light coming on the, uh, on the lens uh, is uh, much less uh, than if I use uh, a bigger lens because the angle is much higher and so not only much more light can pass through the objective but also the, the light coming from this angle is different from the light coming from this angle so also the quality is different. On the campus if you want to, to check there is a, a nice uh, uh, flash uh, where you can uh, move the um, uh, refraction index uh, and see what happens. And uh, uh, why on the fluorescence and on confocal we uh, usually uh, want to put some on the between the cover glass and on the objective. We, we use oil because uh, in this case uh, the uh, frontal lens, uh, the cover glass, uh, and uh, the space between the two for the light uh, are exactly the same thing. So we don't have any more some coupling mismatch here, but we have exactly the same material for the light. It, uh, uh, this means that our lens uh, is your cover glass and this means that uh, the optical angle is uh, 180 degree so it's flat more than uh, 100 degree is not possible and we are touching the sample we are so close to the sample that we are touching the sample for that case oil is a, a great advantage <coughs> this is related to the resolution Abbe brought this uh, law where the, um, the distance uh, between two points uh, is uh, related to the wavelength and to the angle. Again, why? This is uh, the angle. What happens uh, if I change the objective, if I change the numerical aperture? Well, imagine you have a point. Imagine you have uh, a system, can be a single lens, can be your eyes, can be a confocal microscope, can be an electronic microscope. Everything's speaking about mm, waves. Passing through a lens, uh, I have uh, some uh, uh, deformation, I have some uh, um, modification of my single point. Usually I have uh, a central spot uh, with some ring. What happens if uh, I change the numerical aperture? This is a 1.4, 63 oil objective. This is a 1.2, 40 oil uh, objective or water objective. This is the best uh, air 
objective, so without oil, without immersion medium, 20x, 10x. So look here at your sample. This is the resolution you have with the 63, and this is the resolution you have with the 5. Going in Z is even worse because we have a square. 63, 40, 0 0.9, so uh, the best uh, uh, dry objective, and so on. This is more or less one micron, this is more or less uh, two, five microns, and so on. There is a question? No. Okay. Uh, this is again uh, uh, um, a flash to, to see what happens by um, changing the numerical aperture, and you will see how the resolution increase. On the software side, uh, uh, starting from the very beginning uh, of the, um, the new spectral microscopes, uh, uh, SAS introduced uh, a, a very simple software able to help uh, you to manage all these uh, uh, filters. This is very important uh, when you set up your microscope, even if you don't use this kind of software, because uh, you have to understand uh, that uh, you can acquire in, uh, on the single track, uh, so uh, simultaneously, or in two <coughs> different tracks. Usually, this is the preferred uh, way. So acquire one color and then the other. But in some cases, uh, as an example, if you are working on fast light imaging, if you are doing calcium or uh, you need to have a mm, not standard uh, um, acquisition, you need to acquire at the same times. And uh, this is, uh, uh, this is uh, sometimes a problem because uh, the tail of your first fluorophore is passing uh, in the dominion, in, in the wavelength of the second channel. So the, the red uh, uh, signal is composed not only by the red signal, but also by the, the green signal, the tail of the green signal. Okay, this is not important. What happens uh, in a uh, perfect world? In a perfect world, I... I can uh, mark my sample assigning one color for the nuclei, one color for the cytoplasm, one color for the Golgi, one color for my, uh, my specific uh, protein, and so on. I can also create uh, um, a picture on a Petri dish. However, in real life, uh, when I switch on a laser, as told Gabriele before, I can excite uh, the, the spectrum of the first uh, dye, and uh, very, very, in a very, very low way, also the second one. But when I switch on the second lasers, for sure, I will hit uh, the second uh, um, uh, excitation spectrum and for sure I will get in this area some emission. So at the end, if I try to acquire a sample, what happens is that uh, the, the tail of my green protein that is red, because the tail of, the, of a green protein is red, pass and go in the channel of your red uh, fluorescence protein. Usually you have uh, a perfect image uh, in uh, green, then you have exactly the same image as before, plus something else. And when you go on the colocalization, uh, on the merged image, you will get a perfect colocalization. You have uh, no green signal, you have red signal, but everywhere you have a green signal, you still have also a red. 
in this case, uh, or your collateralization is perfect, uh, uh, or probably there is something wrong in the filter set. Uh, one of the first uh, things to do is ac try to acquire separately. So acquire first the green, then the red. So switch off the uh, red, uh, the green excitation light, switch on the red excitation light, and acquire the image. However, mm, most of confocal, I, I can say uh, every confocal, can now switch uh, at a line level. So one line red, one line green, one line red, and one line green. This uh, process uh, takes a few milliseconds, uh, so for your eyes, uh, it's simultaneously, but not for the sample. So for the sample, is uh, acquired in two different times, in two different steps. And this helps a lot, uh, especially if you have a moving sample or something like that. What happened in this case? In this case, it happened that here I still have my green, here I have my, finally, my red, uh, my correct red uh, acquisition, and this is the merged. So in this case, uh, the, the colocalization is more or less uh, nothing. Uh, the limitation, so the advantage here is that I have not to close uh, here, but I can uh, enlarge and acquire the complete spectrum. So we are here, confocal point scanner. One very important thing, uh, uh, as told before by, by Gabriele, is uh, the sensitivity of the detection and the uh, amount of laser uh, I will use. Uh, I usually have two strategies. I can uh, integrate the signal, so wait much more time, and this, main, this means that uh, uh, you need uh, much more time to acquire a single pixel, much more time to acquire the image, or I can uh, use a signal amplification. So I can uh, use different strategies uh, to increase the signal. In this case, uh, I will uh, increase also the noise. In this case, uh, I will try to destroy the sample, a balance. Uh, if I go on the PMT tubes, uh, there are more or less uh, two or more uh, uh, categories. This is one of the standard uh, photomultiplier. This is uh, the new um, gallium arsenide and phosphide. There are much more sensitive in, in the red, in the green, sorry, but not so much uh, in the blue and in the red or infrared. However, usually the sensitivity is, is much higher. Uh, keep in count that uh, for sensitivity, there is a lot uh, of dark noise and a lot of shot noise. Uh, this is, these are not so important for you, but uh, when you look at the image uh, and you see a lot of uh, a pixel, uh, um, random pixel on the image, uh, usually it is the, the shot noise. On the PMT tubes, uh, I still have uh, a light coming from the window, then are hitting uh, the first uh, um, surface, uh, here there is uh, a differential of potential, so usually we are speaking about 500, 600, 1000 volts, and so the, uh, the photon is converting the electrons, and the electrons are accelerated, uh, and every time are hitting uh, an obstacles, they are duplicating, are detaching some uh, uh, other electrons from the surface, uh, and so from one single, photons, uh, I have one single electron, then two, then four, then this process is under your control because uh, you can increase 
the voltage on the PMT, you can increase the gain. In theory, you can increase uh, the, the gain a lot, uh, but you will increase also the noise. So again, there is a, a balance. Um, usually, this is uh, my signal, this is uh, the shot noise, and this is uh, the electronic, uh, uh, the dark signal. When I use a confocal, uh, I try to, to set here um, a cutting, um, a zero, and I try to increase as much as, as possible. How to increase this one? Just in, in two methods. I can uh, increase, uh, I can decrease the speed, or I, I can increase uh, the laser, or I can increase uh, the, the voltage. There are a lot of parameters able to do that. Uh, and this is what happens on the image. In case my gain uh, is very, very high and the laser power is very, very low, <coughs> I'm trying to retrieve from the sample everything. Also, the noise and the autofluorescence. In case uh, my gain uh, is lower and my laser power is higher, I can have a bright image. If I increase again the laser power, I will go in, in the opposite situation, exactly the one I told by Gabriele before. So also the other uh, dyes are starting to emit lights. So at the end there is a uh, uh, a way to, to find uh, the, the best uh, uh, condition to acquire in, on your sample. Uh, the confocal are very powerful instrument, a very sensitive instrument, much more than your eyes. Uh, the best thing to do is look uh, in the eyepiece, uh, check that uh, you market exactly what you need, and then try to play with the, um, with the tools. Uh, because uh, in this case uh, uh, there is an autofluorescence, uh, so the laser is so low that there is uh, not enough energy to excite the signal, or the, the signal is excited very, very low. So at the end, uh, you have, uh, you are, uh, it's exactly when you, you arrive in a, in a room where it, there is no light, you more or less uh, are able to see everything. Bad, but everything. If I have a spot on me, you see black the, the room and just me. And it's more or less the, the same. Uh, how to trust it? Uh, first of all, you have to know your sample. Then you have to um, mark your sample and check that uh, your uh, uh, procedure is, is correct. And then look on your eyepiece and then go. So, do step by step. Uh, I, mm, um, I saw a lot of papers uh, uh, where there is uh, images that are absolutely untrue images, unreliable images, uh, impossible uh, images because of that. This is another example. Si può spegnere luci? Che così. These are, this is more or less a, a good label density. What happens if I increase uh, my, uh, my, my dye, my fluorophore? I cannot come here, but I, I go on the opposite side. So the label density is too low. Here I have no label density, and here is starting to see a standard autofluorescence of the cells. We are autofluorescence. If I take my skin and I put it under the microscope, uh, there is a, a fluorescence. So at the end, uh, what happens if I 
increase uh, too much uh, the, the, mm, the label density that uh, I have an unspecific uh, uh, labeling uh, of my sample and uh, I will have uh, a, a complete red uh, image. When I try to, I can correct a little bit because I can uh, uh, decide to uh, cut off uh, the um, uh, all the the noise uh, and keep uh, only the the information coming from from the cells. In this case, uh, is too low. In this case, is too high. In this case. Uh, the red is the overexposed pixel, and in this case is the underexposed. So if I know my sample and I know, OK, this is the correct situation, I can set up the instrument. If I don't know what I'm looking, it's, mm, it's a nightmare. Again, here. Here, I'm removing information from, from the sample. In this case, it's correct. How much time I have? OK. Um, there are questions. Um, there is no fixed rule. Uh, I can give you a thumb rule. Uh, look uh, on the eyepiece, uh, look on your sample. Uh, if what you are looking, uh, you are seeing in, in your sample is uh, more or less uh, uh, what you are looking for, so uh, if, you are, mm, if you are staining uh, a nuclei, um, I assume that uh, you want to see the nuclei and nothing else. So if you are mm, are your slide, you put your slide under the microscope, and uh, uh, you are looking at the microscope and you don't see the nuclei, take the sample and throw it away, and start the game. When uh, on the eyepiece uh, you have uh, a very nice uh, bright image on the nuclei and nothing else, uh, then you can start uh, for the first time uh, on the confocal or any other imaging system. In this case, you start with a low signal, with a low laser, and you try to increase a little bit uh, the, the voltage. Then you try to increase uh, uh, a little bit and see. Usually, you start uh, from uh, this uh, situation, and you go in this way. If it is the first time you use the microscope, uh, uh, however, both the software or um, uh, um, a person uh, using the microscope and teaching you how to use the microscope uh, can tell you, okay, if you are using uh, a DAPI, you have to use a 4 or 5 laser with a power of 0.5%, uh, uh, and you will set this condition. However, you have to try to decrease and increase the laser and see what happens. In the worst cases, you, you bleach your sample, you destroy your sample. Uh, so, try it. <laughs> anyway, keep, uh, if possible, keep the laser low, because you don't destroy the, the, the sample. If you don't see any image, try for the first time to increase, 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 and understand uh, uh, where you can go. So. St starting from this uh, acquisition till uh, uh, this acquisition, uh, you will have a uh, four degree of magnitude uh, of lasers. So from 0.1% to 100%. So there is uh, a lot to play uh, on a confocal uh, for, for that reason. I still have a... Uh, yes, please. Uh, is there uh, any uh, special place at all? Sorry. Uh, if someone is working for uh, at a station 
Uh, no, uh, the question was uh, if uh, oil uh, is the, the correct immersion medium for every sample. Uh, no, uh, because uh, the oil increase the mm, is able to increase the numerical aperture. However, you can have a, a mismatch uh, in, in acquisition. I will try to... that one. Imagine you have uh, imagine this area will be much higher so you have a very thick sample. If your sample is in water and usually your sample is in water the best solution is put uh, as an immersion medium uh, water again and use uh, an objective designed for water. Because uh, it looks uh, like uh, uh, if you look uh, on an aquarium with some fishes inside and you are uh, one meter away, you, you can see the fish correctly. But if you go in close the aquarium, you see something uh, strange effect. If you are in water and you have uh, a, a glass uh, and you are handling glass and you move the glass, you don't see at all. This is exactly what happens here. So if I pass uh, from uh, oil to water and you are moving the objective, what happens is that you change uh, the, the distance between uh, the air or the oil and the water and so the objective that are designed to work uh, mainly in oil uh, will have some mismatch uh, and some uh, um, uh, spherical aberration. If you, are, if you are using a water objective and you go deeper in a sample, I mean uh, for a 40x uh, you can go deeper about uh, 400, 500 microns, uh, in this case uh, you have no mismatch. So in theory, the best uh, um, objective can be a water objective in water medium. However, if you are working here on glass uh, with a very thin sample, mm, I mean uh, 10 uh, microns, uh, 20 microns, 50 microns, the spherical aberration is not mm, uh, understandable. So you can keep uh, glass, uh, oil, and oil objectives and, and you have the best result uh, as a resolution from the resolution point of view. You're welcome. Yes? So when people are talking about the light quantity, so Mm -hmm. I will show with a uh, with a picture. No, I, I don't have it. I have to come back here. This is the effect. So in this case, if the angle is uh, flat uh, and is very high, the quality of the light uh, is so high that you can have a higher resolution. If you reduce uh, the angle, so you use uh, a different objective, at the same magnitude or you change the class of your objective on the picture this, this is what happens so you are not able to uh, understand and to see small details you have a kind of foggy on your image